But thanks. You're welcome. You know, Denise, it's important to be polite. Politeness is the cornerstone to civilized society. No, I guess no one ever taught you that. You know, politeness, moderation, reasonable behavior. These are things that you just want to talk. I believe you have to be taught them, you know? Like, you don't know them intuitively. So as I lay there, under the dirt and debris, under that billboard out back, wondering whether or not I was paralyzed or how seriously injured I was, I thought about your lack of education. Why has Denise taken the criminal route in this? Why didn't she take the reasonable, moderate, polite approach and just called an ambulance? Then, of course, I remember all my training about people like you, and I decided you just didn't know any better. Are, are, are you going to call the police? No, no, probably. It's the right thing to do. I mean, I was just buried alive. You see, what happened was, was she, um, she panicked. Panicked? She panicked? Aren't you just buried alive? Do you understand that? I had to crawl my way up through garbage and leafy, smelly, muddy things because I was buried alive in a deep hole. Not deep enough. I heard that. She didn't mean it. She did. I tell her you didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yes, you did, Denise. You meant it. What's wrong with you? Don't you have any civilized instincts left? Have they all been dulled or killed by your senseless, self-indulgent lifestyle? Look, I said I'm sorry, okay? Just, just don't start that judgment crap, okay? I can't take it. Oh, look who's going on the offensive. Talk about inappropriate responses. I mean, who buried who alive? It wasn't personal. Why are you making it personal? I didn't do it to hurt you. She panicked. No, I didn't. I thought it through, okay? I was taking precautions. I did what I thought I had to do so we could get on with our life. You're a bad girl, Denise. That's all you are, and that's all you'll ever be. So I should have just told you that from the start. You're a very bad girl. Just shut up, okay? I won't shut up! Denise, I'm... John. What? I'm John. Sorry. Look, Denise, I'm a representative of our government. And what the government represents to me is the people's will to live in a civilized society. And that means dealing with people like you. People who are out of line. You are out of line. Way out of line. Are you alright? No, I have a concussion and I was just buried alive. I am not alright. Did you call a doctor as I asked Denise? Yes. Did you? Yes. Did you really? No, no I didn't. Really? Okay. Why didn't you call the doctor, Denise? Don't you think maybe I was giving you a second chance to do the right thing? So why didn't you do it? Because I I had to know for you to call the police. Protect yourself? Yes! At any cost. God, yes! Back old wicked girl. Just shut up. Make her shut up, please! Oh. I don't know any way you can. Don't make him do your dirty work for you, Denise. Maybe it's time you stop dragging him down. Aren't you trying to do better things with this life? Why don't you let him do that? She's impressed with you because you go to church. Or maybe I'm impressed because he doesn't bury people alive. Listen, the church thing, I just, I did it to win points with you people. It doesn't mean anything. It could, RJ. Just open up your heart. I know you have the right things in you. I, I told her you could cook. Oh, she thought that was great. The fact that you could cook? Well, actually, she thought it was pretty sad that you had to cook your own supper after working hard all day. She thought I was some kind of demon bitch for making you do that, but the fact that you could cook, well, she thought that was great. I like to cook. That's good, RJ. And the desire to cook, to serve, to nurture. These are things civilized people feel. Listen, Denise has been sick. Really, really sick. Sick about losing the baby. That's not an excuse. Yes, it is. Not enough of an excuse. Yes, it is. Losing the baby made her life, made her feel her life didn't have any value. She'd cry all night, night after night, for weeks and months. No. No, I don't want you telling me this stuff. She should know. She thinks you're just some punk. It's, it's not what I'm worried about what you think of me. I just, I want to know if you're going to call the police. I don't know yet. When will you know? I don't know when I'll know, Denise. I'm trained. Trained to think things through and act in the best for interest of people. And the people in this instance are your child, RJ, and even you, Denise. I have to weigh intent with possibility, and possibility with harsh reality. I don't know what you're talking about. Is it better if I just pass it off and let this go like it never even happened? Or is it better if everyone can just put away? I have to think about these things. And there's also the issue of, you know, 
compassion. I'm a Christian. I believe in Christian things. That's good. I mean, I just started. I don't know much. But I'm feeling it's good to be Christian. Oh, please. I just want to know what you're going to do. Maybe you can ask her. Christian to Christian. Can you do me a favor, RJ? Can you get my briefcase? My muddy clothes are on the bathroom floor. Can you put them in the briefcase? Can you get out my wallet? Can you take a plain doll out of my wallet and put it in my hand? Can you take me and my possessions out to the street and hail a cab for me? Can you get some of those things right now? Yeah, sure. Good, because I think I need an x-ray. I think that's the best thing for me to do right now. Just go to the hospital and get an x-ray. Coming. Good. Denise? What? I'll let you know what I decide. Sure. I mean, chances of you getting your baby back now are slim, very slim. Right. But, you know, I'm trained and I've acquainted people worse than you. It's possible, but we'll have to meet the week again. Here? Here or in prison. We'll see. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I, I just need some help. Denise? What? Remember, hang in. Sure. But stay put. That was weird. Good thing I looked through the window uh, before coming in. So, she's alive. Well, I guess that's better in the long run. I, I don't know. So, how did you get on? Did you talk to RJ? You know, I didn't go the first time. Yeah, but you went back. So? I got up to the front porch. I looked in, and I saw her. You saw her? Yeah, she looks like you. She's cute. She's playing with blocks, blue and red and orange blocks. She looked happy. I couldn't go in. I would have scared her. Yeah. We've got to think a way that we won't scare her. Yeah. Uh, I'll be in touch. Wednesdays, uh, Wednesdays are my best days, so we'll talk. I mean, I'm committed to this project. I think it's good. I feel good about it. I'm glad. Yeah. I think she's bleeding internally. Good. I mean, her eyes are bloodshot. I don't know if that's a sign. Me neither. So, what are we going to do now? I don't know. I mean, are we going to stay here or are we going to go back home? We're gonna go on the run? I mean, if Philly grabs Christine, we can take off, just like you said. I'm up for that. We have to. I, I want to kill him that happening. No? No. You know something I don't? Yeah. Can it tell me? Um, no, no point. Not right now. Maybe later. So. We stayed in that motel room for six months. RJ took calls from network executives and he talked to them and gave them advice. He told them that it wasn't necessary to treat people like shit just to get better ratings. He told me they were coming to his way of thinking. Philly made a few more feeble attempts to grab Christine. Last time she was sleeping and he didn't want to wake her up. Anyway, 
anyway, she was, anyway, um, he was crying so hard he could barely see because the book she had opened on her sleeping lap was a book his aunt Janine used to read to him. And she was the only person besides his cousin Edward who treated him with justice and a fair heart. Helen spent several weeks in the hospital suffering from subdural, subdural hematoma. She called me every day and continues to do so, lecturing me on moderate civilized behavior and I've learned to listen pleasantly and sigh like I'm really listening, but, but I'm not really. Not any more than I'm listening to RJ talk about his stupid shows or even I'm watching those stupid shows and listening to those sad, desperate people talk about their problems to experts who... I'm not... I'm not really listening, am I? Because... more desperate than anybody on that stupid show. <laughs> I, I have horrible thoughts about, about doing horrible things to people. And if I were on one of those shows and I told them how I really felt and what I really wanted to do, they wouldn't be able to give me advice. Maybe they just cancel the whole fucking show. <sighs> if I leaned over in bed and I told RJ what I wanted to do, if I told him what I really felt about us, about Christine, about everything, I tell him I'm waiting. I tell him I'm being a good girl. Maybe we'll get Christine back. But I know things don't work out for people like us. It'll just get worse and worse. Until you really do get bad. <sighs> Helen thinks she knows how sad. She probably thinks she knows how mad I am and how angry I am too. Maybe I'll just come up with a way of letting her know. You okay, RJ? Yeah. How about you? Still hanging in? Yeah. Better girl. <laughs>